Boom. We're good. Uh, you want to be the host? Would that be helpful? Yes. Uh, where are you? There we go. Okay. I go to mute. You unmute and off we go. Oh, sorry. I didn't realize I was muted. Hey, guys. I muted, muted everybody when they come in because they don't pay attention. I gotcha. Um, happy Monday. Um, so let's get started. I'm going to share my screen. Oh, where'd you go? Share my screen. Uh -oh. Let's see if this works. There we go. Okay. Share. Present. Present. All right. October. Um, all right. So on the agenda for tonight, we are going to go through, um, something we kind of touched on a little bit in either our last chat or maybe the chat before where we started kind of going through y'all were bringing me some, is this okay? Is this healthy? Can I have this? Um, and we did some comparisons and we started looking at some labels. Well, this is what's in the item that you were asking about. So tonight we're going to talk about, nutrition labels, how to read them, what we need to be looking for when you flip over your box or your bag or your whatever, um, to see how we can I start identifying, is this a quote unquote, clean, healthy, smart choice? Um, we're going to do some this and that label comparisons, how to pick some better options. So if you are eating this bar, maybe we switch to a different bar. Um, and then at the end, we have obviously open, like always, discussion, questions, comments, concerns. Um, if you want to pipe in in the middle, that's totally fine. Whatever's going to keep the conversation rolling. Y'all know I like more questions and more feedback than the mute button. So um, let's get rolling. Okay, so for labels, what are we looking for? So... First thing, if you we're gonna in a couple of slides, there's gonna be a picture of a nutrition label. But on the top of your nutrition label, the first thing up there is the serving size. Then we're gonna talk about macros, your fats, your carbs, your protein, where the calories are coming from, um, your added sugar line, how to read if it is high or low in added sugar. So you can start identifying some really sugary options that you may think are healthy choices. We're gonna talk about how to identify protein. And the ingredient list, how to look at an ingredient list to determine what is in it. Is it healthy items? How many preservatives, additives, those types of things are in their foods? Um, you know, I like to promote whole real foods like your fruits and your veggies and your lean proteins. But I do understand that real life is we have to have some grab and go options. Most of the time they're going to come in a box, a bag, and that's fine. But we want to start being able to pick out the smarter options and also thinking about why are we eating it? What time of the day is it? Are we going into practice? Is this after practice? Is this morning, middle of the day? What are we needing our snack for? Is it between meals? Is it at a meal? Um, so looking at the label and being mindful of some things and how to read it versus just always looking at the calorie count is helpful. Typically, when we look at a nutrition label, our eyes if we're looking at all, look directly at the calories. I'm not worried about the calories. Y'all should be consuming a ton of calories with your age and the level of exercise y'all are getting. So I'm not always worried about what the calorie count is, but these five things will help us making sure that the calories are helpful and worth your while when consuming. So the first thing we're going to take a look at is the serving size. That shows you it's at the top of your label. It's usually going to be in cups, tablespoons, maybe grams or um, ounces. That is telling you basically when it says the label says it's 100 calories or 150 calories, whatever the calorie count is, your serving size is telling you that's how much you can have 
for your serving. And this is just the dietary recommendation for a quote unquote healthy serving size for that item. And it's showing you how many calories you're getting. In some circumstances, the serving size may be one bar. If you get a box of granola bars, the serving size would just be one bar. But let's say it's a bag of granola, your serving size may say a third of a cup. Okay. Um, next thing I want you to start focusing on are the macros, your, your fats, your carbs, your protein. Like I've said a bajillion times, your fats, your carbs, and your protein are where the calories are coming from. So there's a combination of fats, carbs, and proteins and whatever you're eating that is getting you to that total calorie count in that serving size. So being able to take a peek at your total fat, your total carbohydrates, and your protein number will give you a better idea of where your calories are coming from so you can be a little bit more strategic on when you have that snack. So if you find something that is really high in protein, that would be perfect for post recovery after your workout. If you find something that's higher in carbs, that's going to be great to have pre-workout. Make sense? Your added sugars. We want to keep an eye on your added sugars. When we start, when we look at the nutrition label, we'll point it out a little bit more, but about halfway almost to the bottom of your nutrition label, there's going to be a line that says total sugars. Under that is a line that says added sugars. So we want to start looking at the total versus the added because the added sugars are the stuff that we want to try to avoid and limit as much as possible. The total is going to show you all of the sugars, which could, could include some naturally natural occurring sugars like your fruits, some dairy, honey. Those things are all naturally occurring sugars, which I don't really mind, but it's the added sugars that we want to kind of avoid that you find in a lot of preservatives, um, baked sugars, baked goods, cookies, treats, those things that we want to kind of start reining in and keeping in check. Protein, what kind of snack are you having? Why are we eating it? Do we need more protein at this time? And what is acceptable for a protein source? So a lot of times the box will say, added protein, extra protein. This is an extra protein source. If it's over 10 grams, typically that's when you're going to start seeing that pretty marketing tool on the front of boxes. If it's over 10 grams, they usually start slapping on there added protein. But we've talked about before, it needs to be closer to 15 up towards 20 for me to consider it a good protein source for you or like the protein of your meal. If it's 10 or under, it's great extra protein, but it cannot be the sole protein of that meal. Does that make sense? Or even as your recovery snack. If you're drinking a protein shake, I say protein shake, and it only has 10 grams of protein, that's not actually a protein shake. It needs to be up around 20 for it to be considered a post-workout recovery shake. So being able to keep an eye on that protein line, if you're looking for a high protein snack, is going to be helpful. Um, your ingredient list, starting to be able to identify the good stuff and the crap. Um, they are listed. Some of you may or may not know this. When you look at your ingredient list, the way they have ingredients listed from the top to the bottom, they are listed by the highest concentration to the lowest. So if you're eating something that you think is healthy, and a smart choice, and you look at your ingredient list, and the first ingredient listed is cane sugar, this is not a healthy choice. That means that the highest concentrated item in that food is sugar, okay? We have some labels that I'm going to pull up that we'll go through. We'll start looking at labels of the ingredient list, and we can start saying, where are those things listed? What's the most concentrated? If it's like 10 lines down, if there's some sugar in it, that's fine. I'm not worried about it. But if it's number one, you're probably eating Snickers. All right. Questions about what we should be looking at on labels? Beautiful. Let's look at a label. So number one up at the top here. I don't know if y'all can see my, can y'all see my cursor, the blue dot moving around? Um, two thirds of a cup, which is 55 grams. So you're getting 
230 calories for two thirds of a cup. That's how many calories you're getting in that serving. Um, number three, looking at our macros, I put it up here next to fat because the first macro that's listed is your total fat. We've talked about total fat compared to saturated and trans fat. I don't mind that there's eight grams of fat in here. Only one gram is saturated. That's not terrible. These lines, the saturated and the trans fat lines, we want to keep those two lines low because healthier fats could be included up in this total fat line. The saturated and the trans fats are usually the fats we want to kind of keep in check. Your second macro, total carbohydrates. Those are your starches, breads, wheats, grains, vegetables, fruits, dairy. Then you jump down to your protein. Protein's at the bottom. Um, so we want to take a check at where are 230 calories coming from? There's only eight grams of fat. There's 37 grams of carbs and there's three grams of protein. Majority of your calories are coming from your 37 grams of carbohydrates. Make sense? Okay. Number four, the percent daily value. This column on the right-hand side, these percentages, these get breezed over. We don't look at these. That's fine. They don't really pertain to our everyday life, but there is a trick to the percent daily value. There is something called the five and 20 rule. It is a tip that will show you how to determine if something is high or a lot or low or a little of that nutrient. For example, there's eight grams of total fat and 230 calories in two thirds of a cup. How are we supposed to identify if eight grams is high or low? Is it a lot of fat? Is it not a lot of fat? If you use five through 20 as a spectrum, five being the low end or the a little and 20 being the high or too much end or the a lot end, you can then look at the percent next to that nutrient, put it on the spectrum and see where it falls. So eight grams for this serving size and this amount of calories is 10%. That's right there in the middle, totally acceptable. If we go down to where we see 20%, it is at our added sugar line. Total fat, we just determined eight grams wasn't bad. It's right there in the middle, it's fine. Only two grams more of added sugar though, brings us up to 20, too much added sugar. So this is gonna be really helpful if y'all are looking at things that have been branded or that we think are healthy things, like some of our yogurts, maybe our granolas, some of our cereals, those types of things. Being able to flip over, look at the label, look at your added sugar line, and then look at that percentage. Where does it fall between the five and 20 spectrum? Does that make sense? This is something that I love to point out because it's really fun to go open your pantry, start looking at things that we thought were healthy, and then taking a peek at this added sugar line and seeing where it falls. Okay. Um, speaking of sugars, total versus added. So when it says total sugar is 12 grams, added sugar is 10 grams. That means out of our 12 grams of total sugars, 10 of them were added. So only two grams of sugars came from a natural, natural sugar, like a fruit, maybe some dairy, like milk, um, honey, something like that. All the other sugars were added. No good. That's why it's so high down here. Does that make sense when we're starting to look at a label and what we should be looking for? Any questions so far on this before we go into some comparisons? Sweet. All right. Let's get into the good stuff. All right. Let's play this or that. How to make smarter choices by reading labels. We're going to be looking for real foods, less preservatives, less sugars, and better macro distribution. So better fats better carbs, better proteins. What are some alternatives of things that we may be eating because it's a popular brand at the store? What is an alternative brand that you can find at most grocery stores? So the first one I pulled up is Yoplait Original Strawberry Yogurt. 
an alternative, a better alternative would be this Oikos triple zero. They taste great. They have a strawberry. I just didn't pull up the picture of the strawberry. They come in a bunch of flavors. You can get them in the tub size or you can get them in the individual cup size. So I did the label comparison of an individual cup. So one container, they show it as three fourths of a cup or one container, 170 grams. They're sa- they're the same size. So when we look at calories, Yo plays a little bit more. Again, I'm not worried about the calories. Y'all can have all the calories. It's where the calories are coming from. I want us to look at the total sugars. Total sugars, 19. For the Oikos, total sugars, only six. Out of your 19 of Yoplait, 13 of them were added. What? 13 grams of added sugar compared to zero grams of added sugar. And I promise you, I eat Oikos triple zero almost every day. It doesn't taste bad because of less sugar. It's still sweet. I love it. But so being able to look there. Next thing, yogurt as a dairy product is a beautiful protein option. If you are having a hard time fitting in your protein during the day, having some yogurt with your breakfast or as a snack or with your lunch is a great protein source. But picking the right one, looking at your Yoplait, you're only getting five grams of protein. Again, I said, if we're looking for a good protein supplement, we're looking, I want you to get somewhere closer to 10 to 20. You're getting 17 grams of the same serving of Oikos triple zero. How many people have Yoplait in their fridge right now? Unmute you if you have Yoplait. I'm not mad at you, but this would be a good place for you to make a switch. Okay, next. Let's look at some pasta. All right, so I love pasta. I eat pasta all week long, but picking a smart pasta can be, or a different pasta could be helpful. I don't have a picture of it, but there's another brand that I really like. So Bonza made from chickpeas. So you're getting a bunch of extra protein because chickpeas are loaded with protein. Barilla, these are the same serving sizes again. You're only getting seven grams per serving. You're getting 11 here. Barilla also makes a protein plus box. Again, taste the same. They both taste the same. This isn't whole wheat. I know some of y'all have had whole wheat pasta. It's a little gritty, a little grainier. This chickpea one does not. It doesn't taste funny. It tastes very similar to a regular white pasta. But Barilla also makes a protein plus pasta, which you're going to be getting a bunch of extra protein there too. I think we talked about on the last time we chatted, we talked about where you guys can start sneaking in some more protein in your day. Changing out your pasta would be a great way for you to start sneaking in some extra protein grams. The serving size wouldn't have to change. The consistency and the taste wouldn't have to change, but you'd be able to get in a better macro, more bang for your buck. Okay, let's look at an ingredient list. Looking at peanut butter. Y'all know how much I love peanut butter. Um, Jif is the most popular brand. Smuckers, natural. It is my jam. It's my absolute favorite. Let's look at the ingredient list. Look at all the ingredients Jif has. Sugar is the second ingredient, meaning roasted peanuts. The next highest amount in this is sugar. And then you're getting molasses, vegetable oil, salt at the end. With your Smucker's Natural, it is peanuts and then just salt. That's it. The ingredient, I mean, the nutrition label of calorie to calorie, protein to protein, gram to gram, everything else is going to be exactly the same maybe like one gram off on something, but we want to start looking at that ingredient list. Let's clean up our ingredient list. Questions? We've got more. Uh, Bring it. Could you go back real quick? Yeah. What you got? So is the only like main difference between the pastas and the protein? Because there's I, a, go ahead. Because The second option with less protein has more carbohydrates. It does. You're right. 
Um, but you don't need, I mean, you want to get more carbohydrates, but carbohydrates aren't typically where we fall short in our servings. We typically fall short in our protein consumption. So this comparison was strictly just for the protein side of it. Um, because you're typically making up extra carbs through snacks, through other portions of your meal, like veggies are a carbohydrate. So you're making up the gap there with other things. But protein is a macro that I find that everybody across the board, not just your y'all's group, but clients across the board, people that I work with, we always struggle. So being able to find places where we can sneak in some extra protein would be um, the point of this. Thank you. You're welcome. Anybody else? Cool. Let's go to the next one. Oops. Too far. Okay. Let's do some granola bars or some bar snack options. Nutri-Grain bar versus a that's it bar. About the same serving size. This bar is 35 grams. This total weight of a nutrient bar is 37 grams. So not a huge weight change. You're getting about the same amount of food um, bar to bar. We'll go through the whole bar. Again, calories, I'm not really worried about. You're getting a little extra calories with your nutrient bar. Fat, you're getting three and a half grams of fat through your nutrient bar, zero through here. Again, I'm not worried about y'all cutting out your fats. Fats are fine. Carbohydrates, about the same 25 versus 27. The kicker is the added sugar. Total sugars, let me break this down. Total sugars are 12 grams. Added sugars are 12 grams. That means in your strawberry fruit bar, where there should be some natural sugars happening from a real strawberry, there should be less added sugars than total sugars because we just identified that if your total sugars is higher than your added, that means there's some naturally occurring sugars. They're telling me that gram to gram sugar to added sugar are the same. That means there's no real fruit happening up inside the strawberry bar. When we look down at our that's it bar, which if y'all are familiar with that's it bar, that is all that is in this bar is one apple and one mango. When you look at the ingredient list, total sugars, 23 grams added sugars, zero. All 23 came from those fruits. Does that make sense when you're looking at sugar to sugar, total versus added? How we can pick maybe some smarter real food options, still making it easy to consume on the go situation. Sweet. Okay. Next, let's look at some frozen pancakes. I love a frozen situation. I keep the Kodiak or the Vans frozen waffles in my freezer for snacks and quick breakfasts all the time. We're going to compare a couple of things here. I have the ingredient list. I have the nutrition label for both. You'll know I love the Kodiak brand. When we look, let's do the ingredient list first. We just talked about how from top to bottom, it's going to go, what is the highest included ingredient to the lowest? Number one is water. Number two is 100% whole grain wheat. Number two is 100% whole grain oat. Then it's wheat protein. Then it's whey protein. Then there's some brown sugar. More protein. Okay. Let's go down to our egos. Enriched white flour with a bunch of additives. Bunch of additives. Then there's your water. Your third ingredient is high fructose corn syrup and then vegetable oil. Can we all agree that that's not as great as what's happening up here as far as an ingredient label goes? Okay. Now let's go calorie to calorie, gram for gram. Um, again, serving size is 109 grams. Serving says 109 grams. I believe that is for two pancakes, two or three pancakes for each box. Um, they slapped added protein on the side of this box. Go down, there's 14 grams. There's only five. So again, there's more carbs. Again, going back to the carb thing, you're getting more carbs from these pancakes, which is fine, but you can make up the carbs by getting 23 if you wanted to add in a that's it bar. 
but you're getting 14 grams of protein, which protein is the harder macro to consume throughout a day. Are y'all seeing these little things to start kind of identifying where we can pick some better choices and not miss out on easy go-to foods? All right, let's roll with the Slim Jim because I know I've suggested to y'all to get some protein in with like a meat stick, whether it's beef jerky, turkey jerky, venison, um, chicken. So the old, let's go to the OG Slim Jim, twin pack. Um, it cut off the top here, but gram to gram, I think it was 39 grams or 40 grams was the serving size of this twin pack. And this is one big bar for 37 grams. So gram to gram serving size of weight is about the same. Look at the total fats. Again, I don't mind all the fats, but we don't look at those saturated and those trans fats. In your Slim Jim, you're getting 19 grams of fat, seven of which are saturated. For a cleaner, leaner protein, you're getting only five grams, two of which are saturated, but it's the same amount of protein. This is a leaner protein source, chicken versus some kind of fake pork situation. <laughs> okay. Next, let's look at a, a, if you need a grab and go breakfast shake, protein shake, something you can easy pack, drink. Y'all know I love me a core power fair life shake. One bottle to one bottle, 26 grams of protein in your core power. Look at, and this box even says this is high protein, 15 grams. You're going to love more grams up here. You're getting zero added sugar in your core power. You're getting 12 added. You're getting five grams of total up in your core power from the milk. Milk has added sugar. I mean, has natural sugar. You're getting 12 and 12 in your carnation breakfast essentials. Again, I don't care about the calories. You can make up the extra calories if you wanted the 220. You can make those up somewhere. I'd rather you eat cleaner, better, more bang for your buck. You're getting the better calories. You're getting the foods that you need in your body. If you were going to be drinking this anyways, you might as well drink the better option. If you're going to be snacking on a meat stick, we might as well be snacking on the better option. Questions. Let me have it. What did y'all think of my label comparison? Are you guys currently eating any of those things? Um... Was that helpful? Did you have anything else you wanted to compare? Hit me. May I ask a question? Please. Please. Um uh so when it says like natural sugars, is it is it like not the same as like sugar that's made? Yeah, well yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. All right, thank you. You're welcome. So like a natural sugar is sugars that are, let's call it out in the wild, like fruits, things that grow that are real or that come from like a cow, like, cow, the, milk. like the milk. But like it's natural not worse? Like, no, it's like, not worse. It's not, worse. All right, okay. it's not it's manufactured. Not really All right, thank you. You're welcome. The added sugars also, going back to the added sugars and why they are, quote unquote, bad for us. The added sugars are giving us those spikes and those crashes that we've talked about. It gives us, it's bad for long-term weight gain. It's bad for um, the possibility of too much sugar leads to diabetes and heart failure or heart disease. Um, so it's long-term effects. Right now, I know like y'all are teenagers, like, yes. Halloween's coming. We're going to eat some sugar. That is totally fine. But it's being able to take the added sugars out of the things that we should be more mindful of. If you're eating a candy bar, duh, there's going to be sugar in there. But if we're drinking a protein shake, because we're trying to make a smart choice, there shouldn't be added sugar in there. You know what I'm saying? Or if you're eating a cereal or you're having a granola bar, or you're having a pre-workout recovery or a post, I mean, a pre-workout energy something those are where we kind of want to start eliminating or reducing the added sugar in places that it shouldn't belong so like what should we like drink before a pre-workout 
like anything in particular? Not a pre-workout. Like, like, no. No, no, no. Y'all don't need pre-workout. All right. Don't drink pre-workouts, please. Nicole, I have a question. Dear love of God. Is is it about a pre-workout? Because I'm going to meet you. Not really. Um, okay. So let's say I meet like my protein goal pretty consistently throughout the day. And now I'm just trying to up my calories, fats, and carbs. Is it okay to like, um, what's the word we use? Bulk. Uh, to compromise, like what, can we compromise on like less of a, like one of those options had less protein, but it had a crap ton more carbs and a crap ton more healthy fats. Is it okay to compromise yeah. like more yes. consistently? So like for lunch, so every once in a while, I have like a pound of turkey. Like I have a big turkey sandwich and I get my protein there and then can i start like throwing in like the slim gyms which have like way more carbs than the chicken i so not the slim gym because that's a bad fat i would maybe throw in some peanut butter some avocado some nuts like healthy fats that way yeah um but yes you definitely need so there's a level of if you're if and everyone's different so with the protein when I say it's tough, it's tough for the majority of people to hit that goal. Like yeah. it's hard for me sometimes to hit my 120 a day. Yeah. Um, and so I have to have a shake to get there. And then there's some days that I can barely hit my carbs. So I'm going to throw in an extra banana because yeah. if one banana has like 30 grams of carbohydrates oh. in it. I'm not going to go eat a bunch of muffins or French fries. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yes. So yeah, that would be, yes, you definitely want to find the balance and there is compromise for sure. I wouldn't go eat the French fries because you're like, I'm super low on carbs today. Like as a conscious, healthy decision, go ahead and eat the French fries every once in a while, guys. I'm not cutting out the French fries. I had French fries yesterday. It's (laughs) fine. We're human. I love the French fries, but it doesn't need to be like the, I'm having French fries with lunch every day at school. Yeah. Yep. And then also, I well, me and Enzo kind of have been trying a new shake. It's like those Grandma Ensure Plus shakes. Oh, sure. Those are high calorie. Yeah, there's. It's like 350 ca- calories for like this little thing, and we usually drink yep. like two a day. Okay. And I've just like we. I kind of compared it when you were doing the protein or the. What's shake. the sugar on there? It is. It's it's 19 grams of added. It is. It is a lot. But it's 300 and something calories. Look at the percentage there for me. Where is it on the percentage spectrum? It is it is 39% added sugars. But like. How many, um, where are the, so it's 300 and something. Tell, read, read it back to me, three what? So it's 350 calories, 11 okay. grams of total fats with only one saturated fat. Okay. Um, 47 carbs milk 16 grams of protein and we like i normally drink about two after practice so that's 700 calories 20 grams of like healthy carbs it's probably fake and then like it's not it's milk it's from the milk and then it's 32 grams of protein and then then, but it's like 40 grams of fat it's yeah no it's 20 grams of fat it's like 40 grams of sugar yeah is it okay like so like i know like core powers are sometimes hard to find because now yes. everyone loves them are these yes. like a decent um alternative if you're trying to put on weight and like hit those calories hit those fats hit those carb goals yes i wish gonna... it was less sugar yeah it's, it's so here's my thing here's my thing with this yeah if you are getting all of those grams of sugar yeah then you got to clean up the rest of the day's sugar. Yeah, that's fair. Does that make sense? Yeah. So that yeah. would be the compromise, kind of going back to your first question about the compromise. Like if you're is- getting all of those sugars in that single setting, then we got to clean up the rest of the day. Yeah, because that's what How is it? Are you 90- it's after like- drinking all that? Holy Hannah. I mean, it's like a dessert. Like after practice, you're like, oh, that tastes good. Yeah. And then you're driving home and it's, you got a good taste Energy. in your mouth. Yeah. It's like, what is it? It's butter pecan flavored. Sounds great. Yeah, those are like, you're like in bulking season. Yeah, it's. Um, 
Yeah, I'm going to say I would not recommend this for anybody else. I think it's too much sugar. But if you can clean up the rest of your day and not put yeah. yourself in like a diabetic coma. Yeah. Um, you can make a healthier alternative. Th- they're... Like... I hear you. There's got to be a healthier alternative. There's probably um, a different alternative that is there, but. Yes. So, I mean, is the are you like trying to bulk? I'm trying to put on like I think we're trying to put on weight because, um, I feel like us as a team compared to like big teams that like NCSAs and juniors, they're huge. Like, I'm not small, period, but I look tiny at big meets. Um. Yeah, like Coach Nicole, they're like. How the many grams average of protein are you in taking finals? in right now? Say it again. How many grams of protein are you taking in right now? Close to 200 a day. How much do you weigh? About 160. How much do you want to weigh? More than that. Okay. 200 I mean, the good. guys at NCSAs and stuff are like 6'2", 180 to 200. They're big. Like, they're not and small. You should be taking in 200 grams of protein a day. Yeah. And you're hitting that? I'm I'm hitting the protein, but I'm I I'm not gaining weight. If that makes sense, like I've been 160 for like a year and a half, hitting my protein semi consistently, drinking my water pretty consistently. And, and you're I not, think it's just like a calorie intake. It's cal- calorie. You're not taking in enough calories. We're, we're practicing two hours a day, and I'm doing like weights in the mornings for an hour. You're plus. not getting enough calories. Yeah. Oh, I like what Grant's holding up. He's got that mass gainer freaking way. That would have been my, that would have been my alternative would have been like a high calorie grant. Flip that label around for me and tell me what the sugar is in that. Um, uh, the sugar. Yeah. All right. So the sugar is, um, only two, two grams of sugar. Here's your alternative, Caden. Yeah. Get you some golden standard way. How many calories what, does it grant? But we need a bulking way. There's one that's called like mass gainer, but like the scoops are literally like the size of my palm. No, it, yeah, yeah make I know. It with some milk and make yourself your own at home carnation. Bam. I was yeah, gonna ask. Mix it with milk. What was it? I was gonna ask. I was gonna ask about the serious mass. Um, <laughs> it's a. Uh, what Caden was talking about, they're like pretty big. Scoops, <laughs> like Coach Nicole, like, like the bucket is about this big. Like, okay. It's huge. It, it, it's huge, but um they have a lot of calories they have like for one scoop it's a pretty big scoop it's probably about this big filled of protein uh, i mean of stuff and it's yeah 600 calories it's huge um for one of them and it's got 25 grams of protein and like 100 grams of carbs and then like five grams um, of creatine and it's it's very good but it's just like a lot of it's basically almost like a meal replacement it is it'd be a meal replacement but for you guys it would not be a meal replacement yeah it so can we just add that in like can i just ha- like is that okay to have i have oh. to look at the label but um not yeah, like get it like the ingredients i'll try to pull it up i want to know what's in the ingredients it's like coach nicole it's like five grams of creatine per scoop as well i have it i have it pulled up if you want me to say it <clears throat> yeah let me see there's creatine okay. in it what's wrong um, creatine? I feel like y'all need to be messing with creatine Oh, what up? Sorry, it's loading. Here it is. Serious, man. All right, relax. All right, so um, two scoops is one thousand two hundred fifty uh calories. Total the fat. Scoops are ginormous, so I like one is okay. Three hundred thirty-four grams. So. And then what's happening? Um. And. Protein. Tell me what the go back down to um where's the creatine? I don't think I don't know, see creatine. So there's no creatine in it. That's safe. There's there, there's creatine in it. Like it says it on the label. Like it advertises. I'm looking it up. What's it called? Mass gainer. Serious, serious mass. Serious mass. Everyone else on this call is over, y'all. Mass gainer. Fucking leave. It, it it's yeah. serious mass. It's by the it's by the um gold nutrition who makes what? Oh, the um optimum nutrition. Optimum yeah. nutrition, yes.
I can go get it. Yeah, go get it. I'm looking at high protein muscle building and weight gain formula. 50 grams of protein, 1260 calories, 251 grams of carbs. It's, it's, um, do you want me to go get it? Because I have like the scoop she, she size and everything. Up. Jack, no, she has no, a no, that's okay. I don't need it. I don't see any creatine. Okay. Wait, uh, Coach. Magnesium. What's wrong with creatine? Y'all don't need to be taking it at your age. Uh, Coach Nicole. Yeah. What if we go to a college, and are they telling you to take creatine? They really encourage us to use creatine. Like, they they very strongly recommend it they push it well they don't push it but they recommend that and a bunch of other like supplements like magnesium or something i don't know yeah i don't mind the supplements i personally as a nutrition coach cannot recommend it to y'all at your age that's just me some coaches may promote it for y'all depending on the goals i'm also not a college swim coach or a college athletic director or you know what I mean my lane is a little bit that's outside of my scope as far as what I do so for what my lane is and what I do and what I recommend I don't so that's just kind of the deal so if that is what someone else is promoting for you it's like you know that's your call that's Mm -hmm. totally whatever you and you your family think is a healthy choice and safe choice. Um, I'm not going to say, no, you can't have it. I'm just recommending against it. Um, do you know if it can harm us? Like besides like the kidney stones and stuff. Besides kidney failure and liver failure. Besides if that? You don't do it right. <laughs> well, I mean, those are the, there's nothing, there's no, I mean, that's the risk when you're putting something like that into your body, it's usually going to be, what is affected when you're consuming something poorly, it's going to filter through the liver and the kidneys. And if your body isn't equipped to start filtering that, yeah, um, that's my suggestion is, it's just, again, I'm not a creatine specialist. I don't have a yeah. ton of research under my belt as far as the benefits for teen athletes. I just know what I have the research that I have done, I'm not going to suggest it for y'all. But again, it could be totally safe. It's just not my lane. There's very little research in teen athletes specifically for creatine. Yeah. I mean, there was well, a can't study. really. Yeah. There have been studies ahead, for Grant. swimmers, but. Oh, uh, so no pre-workout? No. No. I can definitely say that. That's not healthy for y'all. All right. Jack's like, dang it. <laughs> no, Grant. Grant's very sad about that. Very yeah, sad. Yeah, I don't take pre workout yeah. at all. So it's too sad. Grant's sad. Ugh. What else? Any other things outside of massive weight gain, creatine, pre workout? Oh, how many liters for- a day? Say it again. Who is that, Marcos? Yeah, how many liters of water should you be drinking a day? How much do you weigh? 140. You should be drinking 140 ounces a day. So do that liter math. I don't know. Well, I know Ask- three liters is like 100, so I should drink like 3.5, you think? Mm-hmm. Or, or maybe a day? You should be just carrying around like a Kentwood bottle. Like a jug, like <laughs> a lot. Haley, what's up? Did you have a question? Um, are Celsius bad for you? Yes. <gasps> it's not great, Kel- Kaylee. It's a slippery slope. I don't so, recommend it. So you're not supposed to drink that every morning? <gasps> you're not supposed to tell me about it. <laughs> oh, no. I don't recommend it for y'all. I don't. I don't think it would be a wise choice for y'all. I 
know they're really popular right now. I would not be relying on caffeine if I were y'all at, at this stage in the game. So it's just like heart problems, caffeine, like heart problems. Heart problems, um, sleep disruption in your sleep, disruption in your development and your growth. Um, yeah, can lead to caffeine addictions, which then you get the jitters, you get the headaches, you get the crash in the falls. You get um, issues with concentration. Um, heart yeah. palpitations, like yeah, heart stuff like that. Shakes, yeah. And all of those things are side effects of like caffeine withdrawal. Like think about a drug or an alcohol. It's like a withdrawal. What else? Um, any going back to labels and food comparisons. Do you have any questions about any of that stuff? Anything that you know that you're eating that you're like, oh shoot, what should I switch to? No. Um, any suggestions or things you want to discuss for our next chat, new topics, anything you've been other than creatine? Uh, what about like any other supplement that you think we could be taking? Like, is there any supplement that would help Depends us? Depends on the goal. What's the goal? Get big. Get big. Protein, more protein, more calories. Go eat more protein. Because Enzo, when we've talked about your nutrition specifically, but I don't think you're getting enough protein. I fixed that, Coach. Don't worry. Did you? I'm working on it. Okay, good. Let's start there. And Enzo, what do you weigh? Uh, what do you want to weigh? No, tell me what you want to weigh. Don't tell me what you weigh. Tell me what you want to weigh. 175. You need to be taking in about 200 grams of protein a day, buddy. Okay. 107, at least 175. You want to be taking in the amount of grams that you want to weigh. That's like, just like a really blanket, easy, don't like hold that to Bible, but that's like an easy place to start is if you want to weigh 175, start taking in 175. Okay. Cole, what about supplements for cramping, like muscle cramps and like side stitches? Yeah. electrolytes water electrolytes yeah, so I've, many I've been doing that and it's not working <laughs> is it I don't know, I'm some research I'll cut I'll yeah. ask um coach Brandon yeah um and I know like pickle juice and those things those are for like when it happens not like for prevention but preventative um it's electrolytes and water keeping up with your hydration but let me do some research because I'll ask um, Coach B because he has struggled with cramps. So he yeah. may have something up his sleeve. Yeah, I figured. You're, it's happening during? Yeah, like I, I had a pretty bad practice last week and my quad just like locked and it was just, it didn't budge for like a few minutes. Yeah. And things like potassium and sodium. I mean, I'm taking in plenty of water. It's probably just like electrolytes and like sodium. That's what I'm guessing. Yeah. I'm still, I'm taking in like probably close to 170 ounces a day with like an electrolyte and a carb drink at practice. I'd say you're drinking like a carb. Um, it's called e-fuel. It has like, it has the sodium, it has yeah. the electrolytes, it has, and it has carbs in it. Yeah. And that's perfect for pre. Decent sugar just to like keep okay. you going throughout the workout. That's perfect for during a practice. Yeah. Um, yeah. Let me ask him. All right. Let's see if he's anything. Um, supplement wise, guys, I mean, your BCAs, a multivitamin, your electrolytes. I cannot recommend anything more than that at this stage protein supplements 
to help you get close to that goal. Um, who's that? Was someone asking something or was that just off mute? Okay. Um, um, Coach Nicole, what about essential amino acids? Those are your BCAAs. Oh, sorry. Sorry. No, you're good. You're good. Um, you can get a lot of your essential amino acids through foods, through lean meat, meat sources. So like your chicken, your fish, your turkey, and then the branch chain aminos are the ones that your body cannot. So I'm sorry, your body produces some, and then you have to take in from other things so like your meats, your proteins, they're going to have those amino acids. And then the branch chain ones, you can get those through a supplement. And those things, Kaden, are you taking a BCAA? No, ma'am. I that think may a help. lot of like turkey though, like, or like meat. Yeah, but the BCAs may help with cramping. I need to look and see if there's a direct correlation with that in cramping, but it is great, you guys, for across the board for recovery, repair, and rebuilding of your muscles. Yes, beautiful, Grant. Love it. And you guys can find a BCAA supplement anywhere from like a CVS, a Walgreens, a Walmart, a grocery store, Amazon. Um, you can find those anywhere. Just again, I got to say it. Don't buy the one that has added caffeine in it. Because there is a sub, I think it's C4 that makes a BCAA that has the, um, energy, which I bought one time on accident and was like, what is happening? Because it gave me the shakes and I drank a fair amount of caffeine. So if I'm feeling the shakes from a BCAA energy supplement, y'all don't need to be taking it. Um, what do you do if you don't like protein? <laughs> um, like meats are off the table. Um, I can only eat like a little bit until it grosses me out. Um, sneak it into places. So shake a smoothie, your eggs, egg whites, um, picking a pasta, like I said, like picking a thing that would be normally considered a carbohydrate and sneaking in extra protein there. Um, do you like fish or seafood? No. Okay. So um, it's gonna, you're gonna have to get creative with sneaking it in places like shakes, smoothies, meal replacement bars. Um, yeah, you gotta get it elsewhere, putting it in your meal, putting it, putting a portion together that won't gross you out. And then maybe starting to gradually add more each time. So you can kind of maybe start building up a tolerance. So you can add a little bit more to your plate and it starts to bum you out less and less and less. Maybe you just start like micro dosing your amount of meat. Um. So I had a question like lately I've been feeling super lightheaded and like that thing where like if you stand up or like when I get out the pool like I just kind of feel yeah, like I'm gonna fall calorie. over and I'm feeling like I don't know if it's like low iron or maybe I'm just not eating enough but is there anything like any supplements I should be taking or like just eating more um I always food? recommend if people ask for like a supplement in that case and if you're not getting enough iron or you're not worried if you're worried about like maybe there's a um deficiency there start with a multivitamin um and then eat more then you're probably is this like directly related to practice or is this just like throughout your day it's just like all the time like sometimes i'll just stand up and like you're probably not eating enough over. um start can trying to consume a little bit more at mealtime like gradually making your meals a little bit bigger adding in some healthier snacks um you may have a blood sugar issue so maybe adding in some fruit that have those natural sugars, like adding in a banana to your day or an apple or some fresh berries um, could be helpful if you're having like a blood sugar spike or crash um, and feeling a little lightheaded there. Okay, thank you. You're welcome.
if that keeps happening though, I'd maybe check with a physician to see if you are deficient in iron or a supplement or something like that, where you maybe need to be taking something in additional. Um, I have a question about, do you, like you were talking about yogurt earlier, do you know any like, like necessarily like dairy free yogurt yeah. options? Like, that like actually tastes good. Cause I've tried like a bunch of them. Like I tried this one with like cashew milk and it was like, honestly, like really disgusting. Um, do you like have anything? Cause I, I like the yogurt. It's just like, it makes my stomach really upset. Yeah. You need like a dairy. Like, Are you, have you tried Greek yogurt? Yeah, I have. It's kind of still makes my stomach upset. And okay. it's just like, I don't know. Cause like no, I'll eat it in the morning fun. before school. And then I'm like, a yeah. whole day you're upset. Yeah. yeah, this is super common. I usually suggest the dairy, the Greek yogurt first, because a lot of times people's sensitivity to dairy by switching into a Greek yogurt changes that. Like for me, for instance, I can't have like regular whole milk um, uh -huh. with the same thing happening, but I don't have such a problem with Greek yogurt. But I know there's a few brands. I think I've heard the brand so good. Have you tried that one? Um, no. Coconut milk base. Oh, okay. Also that that's a problem because coconut also makes my stomach upset. Okay. Um, so I don't really like, I, I don't know a, what an art. There's like a, um, Icelandic yogurt. Maybe that's dairy free. Okay. Brent is I'll like bouncing all over the planet right now. Um, I think. Yeah, the so good, mm, the so good one was the only one that I'm familiar with. That's dairy free. Do a search, okay. do an awful search, and see. But yeah, the only one I think that I have had some clients who are dairy free had success with. I think was the so good. So okay, thank you. Sorry, you're welcome. <laughs> Kaden, did you have another question? Oh. Um, are the so, light fit uh, the light fit Greek yogurt like protein cups like good for you? Yeah, those are fine. Light and fit's good. For our rest day, do you think we should be eating extra like extra calories? Do you think for our rest day? Yeah. No. You should be eating consistent amounts, but you don't need to be eating extra on the days that you don't exert as much energy. Mm. so like but even if you do eat extra will like will that help you like gain weight yeah, or yeah gain i think if the goal is weight gain yeah i mean the goal for again for what my experience is in your body craves consistency so we want to be eating consistent amounts rather than this yo-yo of today i eat a thousand calories tomorrow I eat 500 calories um we want to be pretty consistent with our meal sizes. If the goal is to be bulking, maybe if you have a hard practice or you go to the gym and you weight lift, maybe that day you do take in a little extra um, for the post-workout build. But I don't think on the rest days you would necessarily need to like be eating an excessive amount. You're thinking of it as more as like on the day that I'm not burning any energy, should I be eating more to make up for the calories that have been burned? Is that how you're kind of thinking of it? I wouldn't think of it that way. What else, guys? Cool. Um, Coach Ross, do you have anything you'd like to add or throw in there for us? Uh, only that it's definitely a more productive meeting when they contribute like this. Yeah, so this is awesome. It needs to keep happening to make this valuable because you'll only there's only so many slides you can keep making. <laughs> That's why anything that you guys are curious about, throw my way. Um, if we want to have a supplement 
discussion. Again, I'm not a supplement pro guys. I am a macro focused nutrition coach. Um, so my focus is balance, giving you the fuel that your body needs to be successful. Um, so I can give you the knowledge that I have. Again, it's not going to be for exactly some of the things that some of y'all are looking for. So again, just keep that in mind. Like these are my suggestions as far as what I think is appropriate for y'all right now. But again, I'm not all of the things that I told you I'm not earlier. So just keep that in mind. But yeah, if y'all have um any topic suggestions, shoot them to Ross. Or we could always do y'all come next time with come with a topic. And then everybody has to participate and ask me a question. Which is always an option. But I liked all the chatting. Look how much we got covered tonight. Cool. All right. Say good night. Good night. Bye, Coach Nicole. Thank Bye, you. guys. Bye, Thanks Coach. for participating.